Hello and welcome to Throne of Eldraine Draft. I'm doing this like literally the minute it came out. So this is my first time drafting it. So we're going to learn together what this format's like. Castle Vantress is a land. Ah, oh, that seems really good in the late game, but probably not worth first picking. Um, wow, that effect seems really strong and limited. So you make 2 2 one, one white dudes, and then you get creatures get pumped. I mean, that effect is very good. Fallmire Knight is just like a great all-around role player, right? You draw a card and then you make a death toucher. I don't think that card is good. That card's okay. That card's pretty good. A five mana, five five. But it requires you to be heavy green. I think that card also seems good. I think it's between these two. The uncommon seem really strong. And I always advocate this, but if you're just trying a format for the first time, I would always take the uncommons. I think I want to just take Oakenham Ranger. No, I'm going to stay open. I don't know which of those two cards is better, but this is a knight, which is relevant, and it's a single black instead of four green white. I don't know. I could easily see that being wrong, but we kind of got paid off in this pack. Um, actually, a lot of these cards look good. So three mana, three, two menace that pumps all your other knights. That's really good. This format seems very high power. Uh, Burrow Witches, Return of Night. So we're probably going to try and wheel that. Um, I think Bell of the Brawl is better than that. Spyglass, more for Constructed. That is a funny card, though. Or the artwork is kind of cool. <laughs> um, Benevolent Noble. It is a Grizzly Bear with some upside, but it is not a Knight. Okay, so this is a fine effect for Knights. Or it's a fine effect for anything, and it pumps your Knights. So that's pretty good. And then Seven Dwarves is kind of the meme card. I'll flank deals damage, target attacker, blocking. All right, so we're gonna take Bell of the Brawl, I think. Um, noting that Lonesome Unicorn and Lost Legion are both in the pack. Both pretty good cards, what is this? Each player sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent. If they can't, you discard a card, they lose two life, you draw a card, you gain two life, you make a knight creature token with vigilance, then you sacrifice it. Whoa, I have no idea if that is good or not. <laughs> Uh, Reaper of the Night seems really good, and then Clockwork Servant also seems good. Uh, man. Bartered Cow? Aw, I like Bartered Cow. And then this is like a board wipe. I don't know if this is good. They sacrifice a non-land, non-token permanent, and you go back and forth. I mean, the artwork is amazing. Until eventually... Uh, honestly, just taking Clockwork Servant might just be better. It's a gnome... 2-3 that draws a card. I'm gonna try the Servant. I don't know. What is this? <laughs> I love drafting new formats because all the cards are just like, what even? What are these cards? Return X target artifact or non or enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Probably not doing that. Ooh, Heraldic Banner. So we name a color, every creature in that color gets pumped, and we can add mana. That seems really good. Weapon Rack. Uh, it's a sorcery speed ability, but you can pump up your creatures. It's like a reverse serrated arrows, kind of. Um, Shepherd of the Flock is pretty good. I'm trying to decide if red looks open, but I think these red cards are like not that good. So I think I'm just going to take the banner and try and stay open. Just pumping your team plus getting mana seems really nice. Ooh, Corridor Monitor. Definitely going to be looking at this for Pauper. Uh, Merchant of the Veil, also good. And that is a pretty late Fierce Witch Stalker, right? It's a 4 mana 4-4 four, four Trample that makes a food token. Um, so the other black card we're looking at is Cauldron Familiar. It kind of synergizes with foods. And you can just ping them for one and then block. Ping them for one and then block. That's interesting. I like the Griffin. This is a 2 mana 2-1. Two, Killing Artifacts is okay. I don't think this is that good. I'm going to speculate on the Fierce Witch Stalker. I think this card is really powerful. And seeing it that late is probably a sign. Whenever you cast... Oh, an adventure instant or sorcery. Okay. <laughs> I was like, yo, that seems good. Um, here's the turtle. That's a really heavy green commitment. This is a pretty heavy black commitment, but it does let us stay in knights. It's a 4 mana 3-2 menace that can become a 4-3 menace. And that hits pretty hard. The other option is probably Scalding Cauldron for us. Um, I also do like Queen of Ice. I think this effect is pretty nice. And Searing Barrage. I am going to take the Paladin. Try and stay in black if possible. And then we'll see about this green card. I, I know the turtle is good, but I don't know. I guess black hasn't been that open, has it? 
we just took these three. We'll see. Drafting a new format is always like pretty challenging to know what's open because you don't even know like what you're looking for in the packs. So I'm kind of just <laughs> a little overwhelmed, but we get there. Ah, oh, Magic Online, why you do this? It just keeps disconnecting me. Oh man, that's rough. Um, I don't even have time to do this. I'm gonna take this, I guess. I don't know. Like my internet's working fine, but Magic Online just keeps kicking me out of the draft. So we got a corridor monitor, I guess. Unfortunate, super unfortunate. Um. All right, Knight of the Keep. I'm going to just take Malevolent Noble. I think this card is fine. Okay, so black is open. So despite the fact that we lost one pick, um, our draft should be okay as long as it doesn't happen again. I'm going to take Lost Legion. I think Scry 2 is a pretty high upside. Yeah. Ooh, Hedgewalker. Okay, so this is a 3-mana three 3-3. Three, three. What do you do? Oh, we need a bunch of planes. I mean, white also seems open, but... We could even go mono black. So this green card was kind of just maybe not super necessary. But yeah, if we go mono black, we have like all this adamant payoff and stuff. I'm on board. Uh, maybe green is open. Make a food token. Non-human. All right, I'll try the halberd if we're like really beating down. Roving keep, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I want to stay black for now if possible. Roving keep is, what does this do? Hey, we got the swamp. <laughs> seven mana for a 5-7 defender that if you can spend seven mana. Okay. Ooh. Baked into the pie. Wow. There's actually a lot of good options. Once upon a time is probably worth a lot. I'm going to make sure it's not worth more than the draft. I normally don't rare draft, but if you get a card that costs more than your entry fee, it's probably just worth taking. Um, I think baked into the pie is better than bog naughty, but I'm going to check real quick. Ooh, that's rough. Once Upon a Time is selling for 11 tickets. <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and draft to win here. But I could definitely see like later on looking back and this card's worth like 40 ticks. Feeling pretty bad about it. But I'm going to take Baked into the Pie. I think it's just a better card. Bognani also looks interesting, but we don't actually have any food payoffs. So we're just going to take what is probably the best common in the set. Ooh, Reeve's Soul. I like Reeve's Soul. This artwork is fantastic, by the way. Whenever a non-human enters the battlefield with a plus one. Okay. I mean, we're not going to be able to do that, but really hard to pass on this. Uh, this card seems pretty good. Oh, we saw that card before. That's good. And then memory theft. So it's a three mana discard. I don't really like spending a bunch of mana on discard effects. So we're going to just stick mono black, see if we can go that route. Um, and yeah, go from there. Ooh, Stolen by the Fae. Seems really good. Um, what does this owl do? Look at the top four cards, reveal an artifact or enchantment, put it into your hand. That's pretty good. Not the greatest card, so... We could try and move into blue. I mean, this is just kind of ridiculous. Um, this lets you loot. Wicked Guardian is fine. It's a four mana 4-2. How many cards do we have with more than two toughness? One... Maybe two, maybe three. So it's like a four mana four two draw card sometimes. Whereas Stolen by the Fae is just kind of busted all the time. There's also Searing Barrage, but I don't know if I'm gonna get enough red. I have no removal really though. I'm gonna stay on color here. Drown in the Watch. I actually don't know what that word is. Counter targets both convert mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards. That seems good. Iron Crag Feet at seven red. <laughs> It's like a really bad ritual. <laughs> uh, we could take another Wicked Guardian. I'm on board. Although, I don't think I want the second one that much. So, I'm kind of interested in looking at what else is in the pack. I don't think Spectre Shriek is good. Very Godmother. No. The Knight... This card seems pretty nice if we do want to go into white, but we do have some like incentive to stay mono black. All right, we'll just we'll stay mono black. See if that's even possible. What is this? Oh, that seems really good. Yeah, five mana four four first strike that pumps your team when he attacks. I like that. And I'm missing like what a lash of thorns. Sure, we'll take Sir Allen. So maybe white is the next color we go to. Hinge Walker, which is cottage, puts a. Creature from Graveyard on top, okay. Wow, so this is a 4 mana 3-6? That's huge. That is giant. <laughs> the thing is, I don't know if we can hit triple white as easily. We're trying to go triple black. 
Um, the Paladin... Maybe I take the Weapon Rack, like pumping all of my creatures. Or I just take another Hengewalker because 3 mana 3-3s three, three are really good. I'm going to take the 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. It also like fits into any color we want. Players have no maximum hand size. Each player draws X cards. Hmm. Not good in our deck, I don't think. Um, we could just take another Wicked Guardian. With all these Hengewalkers now, Wicked Guardian's starting to look pretty nice. So we kind of want to value toughness. So I can play this because we have a lot of black. So they reveal their hand. They choose a non-land card from it. Their graveyard or hand and exile it. That seems kind of good. Crashing Drawbridge, people are really excited about for like Popper and other constructive formats. I don't know if it's really quite there for this format. I'm going to try Covetous Urge. Okay, so <laughs> this gets back Knights. It also has four toughness. This is a five mana three three flyer, but we only have one way to make food tokens. It is still really good. Like if we just have a couple more ways to make food, this is a really solid payoff. But I think I'm gonna take the Barrow Witches because we have like a lot of knights. So just going that route makes sense to me. Uh, I'll take Memory Theft for the sideboard. Really sad to see Grum Gully going that late. Mystic Sanctuary. Put target instant or sorcery card on top. I think I'm gonna take True Love's Kiss um, for the sideboard. There are some like pretty rough artifacts or enchantments to beat. Um, Turtle. Aw, I like him. <laughs> I'm gonna take Wildwood Tracker, I guess. I don't know that card beats down. Lash of Thorns. Uh, Shambling Suit is actually getting a little more interesting. On its own, it's a 3 mana 1 3. But if we can consistently get two other artifacts, it gets better. So I think right now I'm not going to play it. But it's possible we get there. What we really want is more 2 drops. Sure. Lash of Thorns. I don't think I like this effect. It just like, it boosts power, but not toughness. Although, I guess we're trying to play for toughness anyway. Whoa, what is this? Choose one at random. Create a red and white creature token with these characteristics. What? Oh my gosh. I mean, I think I'm going to be taking Resolute Rider because that card seems insane. But this card looks unbeatable, right? For four mana, every turn you get a random creature that is like a 3-1, a 2-1, or when it dies. That's... <laughs> what? How is that card beatable? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, this card, I mean, it, it's a 4-2. You can make it indestructible in lifelink. I don't know what else you really want from us here. Bell of the Brawl. Ooh, I got to take Baked into the Pie, I think. Bell of the Brawl might wheel. And just having removal that can gain life, I think, is really nice. Copy of any artifact or enchantment. Wow, so they merged copy artifact and copy enchantment in one card. That seems good. Yeah, we're going to take baked into a pie. I really want two drops. Like, right now, my deck is kind of slow, but maybe that's just better. We have, like, some weird Barrow Witches Wicked Guardian combo. <laughs> All right. We, we might just be playing the slow grinding game. Lost Legion. I like Lost Legion more than Smitten Swordmaster. Even though we're going to have a lot of knights. First of all, this might wheel. Oh, wait. Heraldic Banner. <sighs> Ooh. Oh, wow. So we can play two of these and then all of my creatures are just giant. Uh, I probably don't even play Sir Allen. We just go mono black. That's got to be good, right? Plus, I have all these four drops. I, I think Lost Legion would be so good for our deck. It's a knight, it has three toughness, and you can scry two. Will this wheel? I don't know if this is going to wheel. Oh, this is really, really hard. I'm going to take the banner. It just makes... Oh! <laughs> Vindicated! <laughs> oh my gosh, wow, this pack is really nice. And we're, we're definitely going to get at least one of these around, I would think. I'm going to take Lost Legion here over Hengewalker. Because it's a black creature. So yeah, black creatures are kind of a lot better than these hinge walkers. Although, these are still 3 mana 3-3s, three right? Like, that, that effect is great. But we have double heraldic banner now. Definitely not playing shambling suit. I like clockwork servant because it draws a card. But we're going to see if we can maybe upgrade these. But we definitely want more 2 drops here. So, tournament grounds helps us with splashing. Otherwise, cauldron familiar is a 1 mana play that... Um, 
If we can get our heraldic banners out, we'll be a 3-1. I'm going to take the tournament grounds, because it's possible we do want to play this guy. But right now it's not looking too particularly likely. I just realized something very, very sad. Uh, Wicked Guardian, not a knight. So I cannot get it back with Barrow, which is... That's kind of something to look in. Ooh, into the story. <laughs> Instant speed, draw four cards that can cost five mana. Four mana? That seems really good. I'm going to take Witch's Cottage. Um, it's probably going to enter untapped, and putting creatures on top seems good. Uh, I don't think I'm really going to hit the mana requirement for that. So I'll take the horse so nobody else gets it. Because I'm not playing green or anything. Best of Funival versus Ardenvale Paladin. I kind of like the Paladin. Wow, someone's taking all of our two-drop knights here. That's kind of a problem, isn't it? Uh, I don't think it's worth playing Crystal Slipper. The Scarecrow, I think I almost like more than the Crashing Drawbridge. That seems actually pretty good. Wow, someone took all of our two-drop knights. Oh, that's rough. That's rough for us. Um, I'm not playing any of these. Yeah, all of them are gone. All right. Well, that's good to know. Flash, chant to a knight you control. They have vigilance and stuff. Uh, maybe. I think I can get away being mono black, but that's really unfortunate that we don't have like any two drops. I can't believe none of them came around. Cause that, that card is like not that good, I don't think, in this format. It's a two mana two one lifelink, which I don't think aggro is particularly great in this format, just from looking at it, because there's a lot of food tokens and like high toughness creatures. So I mean we'll see. Maybe I was fighting with Someone else to play two drops, but my deck's going to be bigger, at the very least. <laughs> I don't know if it will be better, but it will be bigger. Um, so that's something. I think I like the Scarecrow. Okay, so as far as Knights, we can get back off the Barrow Witches go. Oh, that is a white card. Maybe, maybe I do play this? It's kind of hard to say, because I want to be able to cast... Uh, I think I can splash a 5-mana double white card. Especially with Tournament Grounds helping us cast it. It is also a knight, so getting it back with the Witches is nice. If we don't have the Witches, we can get back. Resolute Rider, this Paladin, Double Lost Legion, Bell of the Ball, and Fulmire Knight. That seems worth it. And we're not going to hit the mana requirement on this Paladin. Triple White is basically never going to happen. And that's probably not good enough. But we have Signpost Scout, Scarecrow to help us splash. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. Put these in. Uh, no blue. <laughs> Can I splash double white? I <laughs> I'm having doubts again. Probably. So I need 15 lands. Oh yeah, we can do this. So right now we have five white sources. We can go up to six. And then I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 black sources. Do I even play? Let's look at the other white cards. Shining armor. It's just fine. I don't even think that's like particularly great. I think the splash makes sense. We we have enough black to cast everything. It's just going to make our hinge walkers a little bit harder to cast, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> we're going to see if the mono four drop deck can get there. See you guys round one. All right, we're playing against Christofkent. I don't know what that means, but we're going to go first, which seems important in this deck. Uh hmm. <laughs> if we draw lands, I think I'm going to keep this hand. It's a little sketchy because we don't have any more two drops that we can draw pretty much. But we, we have two drops plus if we draw into like Wicked Guardian or something we can get there. Benevolent Noble plus Baked into a Pie can become a three toughness. Then we can start drawing cards with the Wicked Guardians. Seven dwarves. Uh-oh. <laughs> that could be a problem. I think I'm just going to kill this. Because if they play another seven dwarves, that's pretty bad. So let's kill this. Then we can start attacking, and then we can... Hopefully if we hit a land, we can play baked into a pie, or we draw one of our creatures with three toughness. And if we draw one of our creatures with three toughness, we can kind of just go off. That poor guy, whatever three toughness creature we get is going to... You were the one taking our 2-1 lifelinks. 
Yeesh. Okay. Uh, I don't really want to trade, so I'm just going to pass. Any land in our whole deck is kind of opened up. Oof, that's a good card. Okay, they're going to gain some life here. But I don't really care about life totals. I think my deck stabilizes in the late game pretty effectively. What do you have? You have more? Oh, sure. Rimrock Knight. Can't block. Okay. So they can get that eventually. All right, let's draw land, shall we? Plains it is. Um, so this is kind of tough. We can take a bunch of damage. I think taking a bunch of damage is fine. Cast with Adamant. Because next turn I can play Wicked Guardian, pinging down the lock with whatever Paladin. And then I have a 4-2 that can block the 4-3. We go down to 10 life, which isn't that bad. And we take it, because I don't want to lose my Wicked Guardian support here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Alright. And then they play the Knight. That's, that's fine. We can start blocking and stuff. Swamp is good. So let's go... Swamp, Wicked Guardian, deal damage there. Ooh, Heraldic Banner is going to be very good. All right, we're just going to pass turn. I want to trade away um, my Wicked Guardian here, trade away my Noble probably, keep this Paladin in play. Next turn, if I draw a land, I can play Banner into the Wicked Guardian. We're at 8 life, which is a little bit precarious, but we have so many more effective cards in hand than our opponent. I block here and here. Because we definitely do have to block. Nice. Whoa. If a red source would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent and opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two. They have one card in hand. Okay. Now we got some decisions here. We can let them untap with Torbane and try and like block it with the Lance. I think that's too sketchy. I think I'm just going to kill him. Because if they have the, what is it, the burn spell that does 3 damage to a player, doing 6 to us, or 5 to us seems kind of gross. So we're just going to kill this. Kind of a cut our losses. They have 1 card left. And then attack for 4. This doesn't have haste, right? No. There are some knights with haste and that could get us, but I'm, I'm going to worry about that when it happens. Ooh, Dwarven Mine is good with the Lance. Rapid Smasher, no! <laughs> what? What? No! Oh, gosh. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Oh, perfect! Okay. So, we can kill that with Baked Into a Pie. Drawing a land would have been really good. So I Baked Into a Pie, kill that, I take 3 damage, and that's fine. I think I'm gonna wait to Baked Into a Pie. Uh... No, I don't think I'm going to, because I'm not going to block this dwarf. I need this 4-3 in play to start drawing cards. So I think I just attack and kill this now. Because it has Menace, so they can't block it. We fall to 5. We have two food tokens that can like gain us life. They play the knight. So we need them to whiff on this draw step. Okay, 7 dwarves is fine. So I think I need to land here. Not the best. Um, I think I'm going to play the Guardian and try and draw a card. Even though it doesn't trade as profitably as the Scarecrow, I think I just need to hit cards. Because like drawing a land here would be really nice. Or not. Alright, we pass turn. We're at 5 life, but our opponent is Hellbent. Well, they just drew one card. It's likely to be not that relevant. And again, if we can ever hit <laughs> land number 6. <clears throat> playing Heraldic Banner, pumping our team, and then probably just jamming a Scarecrow, honestly. This card seems pretty good against their deck. Alright, I feel like they drew a spell, because they're in the tank for a long time. Wow, that was a very, very good draw for them. That card just seems insane. How do they have two of them? <laughs> Alright, so they have two... Okay, so I think I have to lose both of my guys here, which is really bad. Yeah, if I had played the Scarecrow, this would have gone a lot better. I wasn't expecting the secondary Steel Claw Lance. Because I'm at 5, yeah. So I take all of this, but then this becomes a 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Five, five is pretty big, and I go to 2 life here. There's, there's no way for me to survive, I don't think, without blocking with this guy. Alright, deck. Give us the goods. <laughs> there's the land. A little bit too late, maybe. 
So I can play Heraldic Banner. Oh, this actually works. Heraldic Banner, we name black. And then I play Wicked Guardian, it has five power. And we're going to say no. Yeah, so then we can block and trade for the dwarf. And then we can stabilize with Resolute Rider. Okay. I'm on board. We need them to not draw something this turn, but if they don't, we have a game plan. We get a 5-2 lifelink indestructible. There's my air conditioning. So they did not equip. What could they possibly have? Like, what, what did they draw that costs 7 mana? <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> Fortunately, I have 5, 6, 7, so I can play this and hold up indestructible. So as long as they don't have, like, a death toucher not a death toucher like a trample creature we should still be able to stabilize and then like maybe end of turn crack a food token to go up to five life so we don't just die to any like random creature they play but no that's not even true any creature they play is going to be a five five at the very minimum okay oh my gosh <laughs> oh come on that's just not even fair Oh man, all right. Sometimes your opponent draws a little bit better than you. They didn't even want Torban, Torbran. I guess the damage doubling doesn't matter anymore, but oh man, we gotta fight through endless five fives now. And they get to draw one, right? They play seven dwarves, they draw seven dwarves, they play it, they equip the lands to the seven dwarves, and then things get really bad. All right, we'll see if we can beat this. Oh, right, they just have Rampart Smasher. That just kills us. <laughs> you choose a non-land card from the player's graveyard or hand, and then you can cast it. So, like, we can play Signcrow's Scarecrow and Chump Block, but then what? We're just dead. There's n We can't beat that. All right. So, I, I think... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we can... Um, play around that effect too much so I think we just run it back seems good to me they're, they're not gonna draw that well every game right and we should hopefully I don't know our deck's really clunky so this matchup is kind of bad for us but we'll see if we can get there all right we can do this we're gonna go first we're gonna keep this hand we're gonna draw a land if we just draw a land then this hand is great Maybe this should be an 18 land deck, but probably not, because we have the double Heraldic Banner, which adds mana. And our opponent Mulligan, which is good for us. Come on, deck. I believe. Land off the top. Okay, 5 drop. <laughs> that is kind of what our deck does, so I can't complain too much, but at some point soon it would be nice to see a land, you know? Uh... <laughs> no. Oh, man. Was that risky? So we... I don't think it was that risky. We've seen two cards and we're like pretty likely to see one land in the top three cards of our deck. Oh no. How many of these lances did they get? That's so gross. Opponent's deck is very good. Land here? Okay, okay, okay. Alright, alright. Play the banner. Name black. Go. We take five down to ten. Yeesh. When it attacks, so it's just a 3-2, and it's not a knight, okay. You may tap an untapped non-human creature you control, and it can gain trample. That's pretty bad. Swamp. So, the one thing that I didn't really see much of from our opponent is removal. I saw pump spells, but not much in the way of removal. But, let's see. Tap another non-human creature. So they can equip the lance over there and then tap this to make it a six power trampler and that's kind of an issue basically i'm deciding do i play surlin and try and block or do i baked into the pie i think i have to try and block that that little mana stumble probably cost us the game because i think we could have easily stabilized if it weren't for that missed land drop but i mean that <laughs> that's easy to say when your deck is full of four drops right so yeah i think the sequence is probably pay to equip over here Tap the knight, attack for six. If they have two more Rimrock knights, they can kill us, but we can punish them next turn for this play by baked into the pie, killing the red cap raiders when they attack. Because yeah, I saw a lot of like power, but I didn't see any removal from them. What oh, costs three? Okay, that's even better. So yeah, we take six, 
which is not ideal, but then next turn we should be okay. Yep. All right, so drawing a land would make me feel a little bit more safe. Hinge Walker. So I can play Hinge Walker as a 3-3, but I think baked into a pie is more important. We're just going to pass. I might just die, but if they want to attack with like anything, they have to tap a creature. So maybe this works out. Any kill spell just destroys us here, though. Oh, no. Not the three damage to an opponent. Oh. Oh, gosh. All right. I think uh, we might actually still be able to... If they activate this ability, I think we can survive. No, stop. Don't attack with everything. Don't attack with everything. Stop. Don't do it. Yes. Okay. So we can still survive here. That's good. They tap the seven dwarves. We block here. So we, I guess I block first. Block here. Baked into the pie there. Take three, fall to one. One is not zero. Land. Okay. Back in business. Uh, so I can play this Paladin. It will be a 5-3 Menace. And I kind of want to trade off. And I could gain life with the food token. That does help quite a bit. Because I want to trade this. That way I can like start getting value off the witches. Let's gain life right now. Pass turn. And we can actually kill really quickly once we stabilize. Because it's a 5-3 Menace that's going to become a 6-3 Menace. Gosh, the Dwarven Mine is really good. But we have First Strike, and as far as I can tell, they can't go above 4 Toughness. So if they swing out, they have to sacrifice a creature here. Oh no. And they get a Flyer. Oh no. I feel like that would have actually just been better playing the Flyer. Right? I don't know how I deal with a 2-2 two -two Flyer. <laughs> okay, Swamp is good. So, I can play Hedgewalker and hold up Baked into a pie. Because I need to kill this flying creature. I have no way to deal with it. And it will kill me. And I don't want to run out Barrel Witches, so I'm just going to play this as a 3-3 blocker. Pass turn. Then we can, like, I don't know, double block the Red Cap Raiders if they activate it. Yeah, it, it sucks to have to kill it. a 2-2 two -two flyer with Baked into a pie. Is it a knight? It is a knight. Wow. What a... <laughs> Looks like I picked up all the bad knights. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so they kill that. That's a problem. We can get it back. Man, their deck is really good. So they're going to tap down the dwarf to pump up the raiders. Okay. So what does this look like? Um, The 3-3... Three, three... So we're taking one at the very least. I think I have to kill the seven dwarves. No, wait. <laughs> I definitely block like this. And then I can baked into a pie killing this guy. And then I just have to race, I guess. Because they can play the flyer next turn. But then I can gain life off baked into a pie. I keep my 5-3 menace around. They lose two creatures here. Kill this. Okay. They have a 3-3, but a 3-3 is not a 4-4. 2-3-4-5. All right, let's start attacking. Play the Witches. Get back Sir Allen. Hit for 5. And then we can block the Dwarf. They can play the Flyer, but the Flyer is going to hit us for 4. And we're going to be at 7 life, so it's going to take 2 attacks. We might actually be able to win this race. Gain some life. It's really close. Ooh, Fulmire Knight. Uh, we lose life, so I think we swing with both. That's nine damage. They can gain three, so we have to keep that in mind, but we swing with both, and then we go Sir Allen into Fulmire Knight, probably. I don't know, I just have to put out as much damage as possible right now. Whoa. All right. Yeah, I think I go Sir Allen into the knight. If they if they drew a pump spell, uh, I want to cast the knight. If they drew a pump spell, then we still don't die, actually. Yeah, they go up to nine. They hit us for four. They equip the dwarf. 
Am, am I dead right now? So the dwarf blocks here, they take super lethal. So if they don't have anything, they die. But that's pretty unlikely. They're taking at least probably six off the paladin. I don't know. It's really close. I think our best draw might be the heraldic banner, maybe? We take four. They equip the lance. We might get there. I mean, we just have to go for it. There's pretty much nothing else we can do here besides swing out. So, swing out it is. 6-3 menace. So they have to, like, kill one and block one, and then we die. Okay. Yes! Okay, okay. Um, I think I discovered something. I might want to bring in True Love's Kiss. Because it exiles their equipment, which is, like, really problematic for our deck. That seems kind of good. It is another 4-drop. But we are also on the draw. Can I really bring in another double white 4-drop? It is so good against their equipment, though. Like, the equipment is the only thing that's really making it hard for me. Shining Armor also can, like, help me block. Hmm. I just don't know how many 4-drops I can realistically put in the deck. And it's double white. If it was not double white, I would bring it in, but it's too risky, I think. Sir Allen is way better, because it's a 4-4 four, four first strike that pumps my team. Well, this is a mulligan. Fortunately, we're on the draw, so we can afford to mulligan here. I kind of have to keep this. And Hedgewalker seems pretty bad, because we can't adamant it very easily right now, so I'm going to put that on the bottom. Um, I can Lost Legion, hopefully, into lands, and then Lost Legion into Wicked Guardian should get there. Okay. Come on, deck. Can I please not? <laughs> I've been stalled in lanes like every single time. I just would really like to not have that happen. Alright, we are going to just kill that. Oh my gosh, please, deck. Give me the lands I need. Go. Land. Land. Alright. It enters tapped, but that is the price I pay, I suppose. And it's just a 4 1. With haste. Oh man, that card's really good. Okay, Swamp is nice. I think I am going to play Lost Legion here. Because that way if I draw a land, I can just curve into Barrow Witches. Because I do want to trade off. And this lets me scry as well. So that I can put a land or relevant stuff on top. Ooh. Can I keep Heraldic Banner? I think I actually top... So next turn I play... Yeah, I think I would top both actually. Because now we trade, unless they kill it. Either way, I get to play the Witches next turn. Okay, so that takes their turn. We fall to 12. They did side in removal, though, which is good for them. Mm. Okay, 7 Dwarves is not the scariest. Still a little rough. Let's play the Witches. No, I can't, uh, I can't actually do that. Okay. <laughs> get you back. Go. Hopefully they don't have a way to kill this, and then we can trade off with the Paladin. Then next turn, I can play the thing naming black, play Lost Legion again, trade with the dwarves. What is this much mana? Ugh. Okay, they don't have adamant, but we take six, so we're like dead next turn? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. One, two, three. Right, I can't really do much better than playing this banner, and then playing, obviously gonna name black. Playing Lost Legion, setting up my draws. I might just die, but if I don't, then we got some game. Uh, so Swamp lets me go... Yeah, I kind of like both. Go. Alright, I need to survive this turn somehow. Am I actually surviving? Nice! Okay. Opponent's Hellbent. Well, they got one card in hand. So we can go land into Hengewalker into Wicked Guardian. Yeah, that seems nice. They got one card left. We might actually stabilize here. Go. Okay! <laughs> Dwarven Mine makes a 1-1, one, one, but they don't have the equipment. I need to kill them very quickly. So I can go... Uh, Clockwork Serpent with Adamant. Or Servant. Draw a card. Play Wicked Guardian, draw another card. Oof. One... Actually, we're kind of a bit away from that, but that's okay. Damage here. Okay, there's the planes for Sir Allen. Uh, I kind of want to attack with both of these. They have one card in hand, 
And I need to kill them very quickly. Maybe attacking with both is too risky. I just attack with the Wicked Guardian. They trade, that's okay. Seven Dwarves. Oh, and they just traded too. Nice. Oh, wow. Resolute Rider? That might just do it, actually. Um, the lifelink is really relevant, but it's so mana inefficient. I, I gotta go with the Barrel Witches, I think. Four, five. Getting back this knight. Play this knight. We get to scry. Oh, wow. <laughs> I feel like every single time we've done that, we've top topped. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woo! So we were going to next turn draw land, and I think I was just going to go with one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. I was going to go with Sir Allen into the witch or the wicked guard, draw a card, and then just woo. Woo! Turns out without their double equipment, they're nothing. See you guys around two. All right, I have the fire. Let's do this. Man, all of these hands with, we're on the play. I have to keep this. I can't mulligan this, right? If we draw a single land, this hand plays out so smoothly. Maybe I should be playing 18. I don't know. But I can't mulligan this. We got Reeve Soul to like kind of kill their first creatures. And then we just have a lot of like really good adamant cards. Clockwork Servant seems just insane. I think basic planes would be rough. Oh, wow. They have the Gilded Goose. Must be nice. There we go. Uh, do I kill the goose? I feel like I actually have to kill this goose. It ramps them, plus it makes a bunch of food tokens. Like, that's such a good enabler. Target creature blocks this turn. Okay. Not that worried. Oof. Heroic banner is kind of nice, but I kind of want to get down a blocker. So, we'll do that. Just baked into a pie. So, next turn, I probably just jam the banner. Ginger brew. What does this even do? Basically, is unblockable. Oh. Weird. They have a pump spell? I'm gonna assume it was a mistake. They could have a pump spell. Okay. So I take a little bit more damage this way. Okay. Let's play Henge Walker. Go. They're down to three cards in hand. Ooh, Trail of Crumbs is good. So you make a food, and then whenever they sacrifice a food, they get permanence. Okay, so they're forcing us to trade because they want to hit like land drops and stuff. That seems fine with me. But they just have a ginger brute, and we are going to play this paladin here. Just start smashing. Ooh, that's good. Wow. Opponent's deck is Trail of Crumbs, man. Trail of Crumbs seems very strong. Planes. So I have five mana, so I think I just have to kill this. <clears throat> Four three tramble is just like a lot. They have one card left, but they are gonna be drawing a bunch of cards with the trail of crumbs. The next turn I'm gonna double heraldic banner and hit for six. It's hard to race this much food though. Hinge walker, what do you do? Okay, they have a three three. Yeah, it's pretty good. Hmm. I kind of like playing Wicked Guardian here instead of the banner. It means I get in for less damage, but it puts pressure in play, and that's nice. Lost the chance. And this has Menace, so they can't block it. I will trade Wicked Guardian with Hendwalker. Like, that's, that's fine with me. Wicked Wolf, what do you even do? What? Ugh. Oh. Uh, that doesn't... It has to fight. No, it says up to one, never mind. Do I trade or do I just take it? Because I can swing back for five. I think I just take it. Oh, that makes sense. So we can play the swamp, play the banner naming black. I can attack with this paladin. It can double block, but that's like pretty good for me because then they lose their food. I kind of like swinging with both. Yeah, that trade seems favorable for me. And so I can play the, what does this wolf do? It fights up to one target creature you don't control. I don't really want to play Lost Legion because they can, right? Ginger Brute is a food that I believe can be sacrificed to Wicked Wolf. So if I play Lost Legion, 
I'm basically trading it for Ginger Brood at this point. Alright, we're just gonna pass. I want to, like, hit him with Baked into a Pie. I'll take four. Hinge Walker, sure. Spider. So their last card is the Wolf. So Ginger Brute, they can sacrifice to gain life. That makes the Wolf, like, pretty strong. I'm at seven life, so I can just crack this food and then play Lost Legion. Okay. I think that seems correct, because I think basically if I hold up Baked into a Pie... Oh, wow. I was going to say then the Wolf 5, 6, 7, so I can play Resolute Rider and hold up Indestructible. Hmm. This is getting actually pretty interesting. So they can hit me for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I can hit them for 6, right? I can just play Heraldic Banner. That seems worse than just playing the Lost Legion, because that blocks basically everything. Let's attack because they could double block and if they double block is it even good for me to bake into a pie the hedgewalker that ginger brood is really kind of the problematic card here i feel like it's actually not that good for me to bake into a pie the hedgewalker so i'm just going to play lost legion hold back hope that they play the wolf with ginger brood up and bottom both of these lands that seems better but it kind of goes poorly if they just attack with everything. I really need them to play this wolf. Okay. They're just going for it. I think I block one and take four. This doesn't have flash. I don't know. Either my opponent's like next level playing around baked into a pie, or I don't actually know what's going on here. But I think at this point I can just kill the henge walker. And then the wolf isn't even that scary. Swamp. Hit for five. Yeah, I don't... This is weird. <clears throat> so they can, like, trade... Now they can trade for that. But now I play Resolute Rider. And hold up Indestructible. And it's a 5-2 lifelink Indestructible. So, like, sure. <laughs> I take one. Maybe they think Wicked Wolf, like, has to fight or something. Nope, they're just next level playing around uh, baked into a pie. Right, so this target, so I can respond to the targeting. They're gonna kill my Paladin. Wow, that was some next level play, I guess. Curious Pair. Create a food token, no way. <laughs> oh man, so I can't save that. So they have Curious Pair, they can make a food token, and then they're gonna get a 1-3. Yeah, their deck seems pretty sweet, but we're gonna crack this. And we're just going to start gaining ridiculous amounts of life. Well, like Banner, gaming black. Then I can still, yeah, I can gain lifelink and indestructible. Go ahead. They're at two life. Um, the food token can put them up to higher. But dealing with this rider is going to be very hard. What is this? Holy cow, I did not know that card existed. <laughs> Seems pretty good. How did they scry? One bottom, one top, okay. They play a lot of blockers. They take five. So they're almost certainly going to chump block with Curious Pair. And then they can swing back for nine, ten, eleven. But I'm gaining six up to fifteen, so... And they're Hellbent. And how much mana do I have? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So I could not even give lifelink and just play Wicked Guardian, but giving lifelink seems pretty good. Lifelink. Eat your creature. So if they like swing out, they just die. Or... Oh man. So here's the interesting part. I can tap out for one turn of Indestructible to play this Wicked Guardian, which is also a lethal threat and blocks everything that they have. They have one turn to draw something to deal with the rider, and they're in mono green. <sighs> I actually don't know here. I guess it's probably best just to play Wicked Guardian without pinging it. No. That seems fine. The 6-2 can, like, trade with all these. They have to sit back and block it. Yeah, I, li I like that better. We miss out on a card, but it's just so risky. Because, other like, I don't... Think their deck has a way to what is that okay maybe they do have a way to deal with it 
Yovro, Lord of Garenberg. So it's a 3-mana 4-4 four four that whenever a creature enters... I guess it's unlikely to be triggered more, but a 3-mana 4-4 four four is kind of big. Uh, so it's a 7-6. Wait, what? Aren't they... Wait, what? Hang on. So they have Yovro in hand. They're hitting me for 11 damage. On the back swing, they're going to play Yovro, and they're going to trade. Okay, so I take 11, I fall to 4. They play the 4-4 blocker. I swing with both of these. They lose their 4-4. Four four. Oh, they can equip this to the... No, they can't equip to the spider. Hang on. So, yeah, I take 11, I fall down to 4 life, and then... They play Yovro, I swing back, I gain 6, I go up to 10. They double block, but then I die. So I think it's actually better to trade off here. Because then the race just goes so much better in my favor. Yeah. So I, I would have been better had I like given Indestructible and stuff, but that's fine. Attack, they have to block. Plus 2, plus 1, right? Yeah, there's no way they can kill me. Oh gosh, I'm lagging out again. Uh, hang on. All right, we're back. We're back. Um, I'm attacking. Okay. I, I have to play very quickly now. I'm so far behind in time because I keep lagging. Like, you guys don't see it because I'm editing all these like things out, but I, I like have to wait so long between every step. I can still. Okay. Sorry. I, I have to play like just incredibly fast right now. Um, I don't think I really care about the scarecrow, but the witch seems good. I have. Yeah, lost legion to get back and stuff. My opponent's at five life. Yeah, we just gotta play like lightning speed. My opponent. <clears throat> okay, so we won game one. I have nine minutes to win game two. That's not so bad. Okay, I can like chillax for a second. Opponent has a lot of food. I don't know if there's any way to counteract like the food tokens, really. So I think I just run it back. Yeah, this hand looks good. All right, we're gonna keep this. Try and trade off a lost legion that we can get it back with the witches. Ginger Brute. Seems pretty good. Is that a common? I think it is. Uh, We're gonna try and get Max Valley off this knight. That's also another card we can get back with Barrel Witches, which I like. Ugh. Trail of Crumbs turn two every game. Pretty good. I wonder how many Trail of Crumbs they have. If they just have one, I'm gonna be kind of sad. <laughs> Alright, I can have six. We gotta speed up this gameplay. Ooh. Playing Yoro, you say? Alright, let's... Play Lost Legion. I kind of want both of these, honestly. Heraldic Banner into that guy seems really nice. And Heraldic Banner is land number five. If they play the wolf here, then there's like basically no hope of me winning. Wow. Trail of Crumbs is just going to destroy me. Alright, I take a lot. Alright, so I think I pretty much just have to kill this guy and sit back i think gaining one life is kind of relevant they have so many food tokens that i'm not going to race them effectively right now they have a lot of hedge walkers they make gingerbread unblockable oh they don't okay well that's pretty good now i can go with the banner on black and then pop the food token go up to 14. They have some curious pairs, but what even is this? Oof, okay. That dies. <clears throat> Pop the food. Well, ooh. Covetous Urge. I can cast out Muscle. That doesn't do anything. Let's just play Sir Allen, because that blocks so well. First Strike is really good. They have one card in hand, and they can only find permanence, so... If they have the Wolf, then I just get wrecked, but that's one card. Okay, Gilded Goose. I'm really glad I killed Gilded Goose that other game. And they play Curious Pair, okay. Last card is Ginger Brood Unblockable. Sure. Lost Legion. So, let's be max mana efficient here and just play Barrel Witches. And then pass turn. I basically just gotta sit back, build up an army, and not die. Because we can block all these Hedgewalkers all day. Ginger Brute might kill me eventually, but I can outmuscle it. Okay, um, I guess we play Signpost Scarecrow, because it's the most- No, 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 I want a Lost Legion. That way I can scry into stuff. 
kind of want lands. Witch's Cottage enters tapped. I don't really want that. But I kind of like Wicked Guardian. Go. I might actually be dead soon. I don't know. Maybe I am dead. They have the pump spell. They can sacrifice a food. Yep. Okay. I guess he got there. Man. All right. Game three looks a lot better. We don't have to play so quick now that we kind of went through game two very quickly. Um, I guess, oddly enough, if I had played Covetous Urge, I maybe could have not died there. But I don't think that was correct. Yeah, I'll keep this. I think our deck is actually pretty good. Heroic Banner in a mono black deck. Well, we have one white card. It seems really, really good. And we get to go Fallmire Knight into Barrel Witches, which seems really solid. Yeah, we go turn three, Fallmire Knight, turn four, Heroic Banner, cast the Death Touch, and then hopefully trade it off eventually and hit Barrel Witches, because it's going to be a 2-1 Death Touch. Opponent kept seven, okay. Let's do this. Yo, stop it with the Ginger Brute. All right, Swamp, go. If they have the, um, the two mana thing that makes a token, whoa. That's a big, that's a big clock actually. All right, that's something. Um, I guess at this point I just want to play a heraldic banner, naming black, because I might have to bake into a pie that ginger brute. Oh, this is a ridiculous start from the opponent. Holy cow! Wicked guardian. Uh, I kind of want to just cast the knight. I don't really want to lose life here. Like I can play the knight and then hold up baked into a pie. Sure. Because that can block Yovro. So this is basically an enchantment. It seems kind of good. I wonder if people will play this in Popper. Hmm. Block here. And do I baked into a pie? I'm gonna let damage resolve. Weird. Adamant Hedgewalker. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have let damage resolve, I don't know. That just seemed like weird sequencing from the opponent. Let's go. Three, four, five, play the witches, get back our dude. And five minutes to equip is a lot. Yeah, now, now I think we start winning. Swamp, I think I wanna just see what's going on over there. What is this? Oh, that's gotta be something that I take. <laughs> yeah, none of that. None of that going around over here. <laughs> What did they say? Yeah, that's brutal. So we can cast that eventually, right? You have to spend mana. Yeah. And I think I just wait. Go ahead. So what do you do? One, two, three, four, five, six mana. He's a seven, six vigilance trample. I don't get the food tokens. And I have to make sure I crack my food at end of turn. All right, this is my game to lose. Let's play him. Three, four, five, six. No attacks. I don't really want to like let them get this back. Two, three, four, let's go. Wicked Guardian. Ping the Barrel Witches. Go Swamp, Wicked Guardian. Ping the Festering thing. Go. I could be attacking with this, but I think it's better just to like build up a board because them getting this back with three food tokens seems really rough. So I kind of want to just wait until, I guess I can F6, right? They equip to the spider? Sure. Ooh, Bell of the Brawl is good. One, two, three. Let's play Lost Legion. Bottom. This Paladin does have Menace. Sure. Wicked Guardian. Um, Go. They have a 3-6, so the only card that can really attack is Feasting Troll King, but I think my board state is very quickly Oh man, uh, one, two, three, four, play the rider, play this paladin, go. Yeah, if they couldn't get this back, I would not, I would start attacking, but I think basically the way I lose is them getting that back. So let's go with the knight. I guess I use one white here. All right, cast him, play bell of the brawl. And then next turn I just start attacking. 
Because that's just an incredible amount of damage. Ooh, that's good. Okay. Still just tons of damage, though. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's just attack. Attack, 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 attack. What happens if I swing out? They can hit me for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's not even... Okay. <laughs> that's not even close to lethal. Because I'm going to gain life off this. Plus I can get knights back. Plus I have this guy. I guess fog is fog in this format. That would be kind of gross. But I'm going to go up to 17. And they certainly have to lose some creatures in this exchange. So like basically their winning line involves... Um, like killing this and then getting a bunch of foods to get it back. But they can only get it back on their turn. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 13. That's already lethal, so I don't actually have to activate anything with these blocks. I'm basically deciding if it's worth it to activate this lifelink. 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, 3, 6, 9. So they fall to 1 life with this attack. Sure, I'm not going to do anything. Alright, so that actually just eats the, the fighter, dude. But they fall to one. I can play the witches. Getting back that knight. Um, let's just pass. They're like super dead here. Alright, on to the finals. Despite the lag, we got there. Stealing their, uh, their big boy was pretty, pretty important. <laughs> Holy cow. See you guys there. All right, we're in the finals. This hand looks pretty good. We just need a single black source. And we're just going to kind of go off. We're on the draw, so we're pretty likely to hit one. And I'm actually just going to jam Witch's Cottage. I know it could have some value later on, but I really want to be able to play a turn three Hedgewalker. And uh, it like turns on Covetous Urge. Like it just, our whole hand gets so good when we do that. I have not seen blue yet, so that'll be interesting. I'm pretty okay with this guy getting countered. I have like way more powerful stuff going on. I have no idea what counter spells are in the format, but I think there are definitely a couple. Okay, or just not getting countered is also good for me. Oh man, can I draw a swamp here? I can covetous urge. Swamp. Alright, that's fine. Um, I'm okay trading my 3-3 for their 3-3 flyer. Now I can play a 4-3 menace. Yeah, and then as soon as I can activate this, I thought this was non-creature non-land. This is any card, so I definitely should have played it in round two. This card seems very good. There's an untap. Okay, so he's just dead. Well, that's kind of mean. All right, let's attack for three. Okay. Um, I can jam Resolute Rider, but that seems kind of just worse than playing Lost Legion. If they can counter it or something, I don't know. It seems better to wait for that card. Um, kind of want both of these. <laughs> Go. Next turn, I really want to play Swamp into Covetous Urge. Tome Raider. Sure. Okay, so they're keeping it back. I'm still okay with this trade. So let's attack with Hinge Walker. I want to get them to tap out before um, I cast Covetous Urge. If I get hit by a combat trick, so be it. I've baked into a pie. Alright, let's see if we can get there. Show me what you got. Don't counter it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that seems very good. Um, I can take baked into a pie. And then they can tap down my creatures. That's actually interesting. Maybe I want them to have baked into a pie. Because it costs more mana. If I take Charmed Sleep, it's cheaper. And Resolute Rider can play around it. Nah, I'll take that. Go. <laughs> now I know what they have, so feeling pretty good about what's going on. And now they're pretty incentivized to cast Charmed Sleep on my Hedgewalker, and then I can play Resolute Rider or Sir, S Sire Allen. So I need to. Okay, so they played Charmed Sleep. Did they play a land? They did. Okay, so they're down to one island, one unknown. I take four. Makes sense. Uh, so I can play Heraldic Banner into Balmire Knight. I think I'm just going to kill their dude. That seems like pretty good. For two, so they just have an island and one unknown. I just have all this action. I don't want to like keep taking damage. Wistful Merfolk. 
three two blocker did they not play a land they did not that's interesting okay we can go i can trade my two three for their three two but that doesn't seem like that ideal let's play sorellian they have one unknown no attacks because i can give it four toughness when i attack with this guy wow we are grinding out these games man <laughs> What cost this much mana? Holy cow, what cost this much? Please just be a big creature that dies to baked in a pie. I'm so scared right now. Okay, so they played their islands. They have two unknowns, and one of them appears to cost a ton of mana, but maybe they're just messing with me. Okay, it can't be that good because they didn't attack with Tome Raider. Let's go Swamp. Play the banner on black. Attack. This trade seems acceptable. All right, they must not have much because they're just losing both their guys here. Sure. And then I can play you. Then I can play you. And it's great because it attacks for two, actually for three. All right, what cost this much? A big X mana draw spell? Yeah, that is exactly what it is. That's really, really good. <laughs> but next turn I get to resolve Resolute Rider with indestructible up and that should hopefully do a lot because if, if they have any charmed sleep they're going to charm sleep this guy oh okay well the benefit of this is if they take baked into a pie i get to play resolute rider and if they take resolute rider i get to play baked into a pie so that seems okay they could covetous urge a covetous urge <laughs> God, this card's so good, man. I mean, it's hard to cast, but it seems really powerful. Okay, so they took the Rider. Mm, they also have Indestructible up. But they can't wait, so they need another spell. Wow. Okay, they did in fact have another spell. I don't know how my deck deals with a Resolute Rider. You have more spells? Stop. Stop. That's too many. You've, you've played too many spells in this game. Okay, just any creatures is good. Um, definitely attack. Three for Lost Legion. I really want to get this scry in. Uh, put both on top. Play the Scarecrow. I don't really need to leave up Baked in a Pie, because if they play the, the creature, I can just kill it on my turn. So they can gain... They actually can't give it lifelink because I have Baked into a Pie. And they don't have enough black to do both. So if I just attack out and they play the knight, currently they just die. So they would need another spell. Because they, yeah. Like if I, let's say I just pre-combat baked into a pie the resolute rider. Then they have to activate the indestructible. Then they only have two blue left. And I'm swinging for, I guess it's, yeah it's four. I'm swinging for four. So they die. Uh, that still doesn't do it but it means that they could have like some other interaction that could save them this has been a crazy game covetous urge it hurts playing against your own good cards but it's kind of interesting it makes the games a lot weirder is this another charmed sleep <laughs> animating fairy so it's just a 2-2 two -two flying well that doesn't go very well for them right because now i just swing out and they have to block with this. If they give indestructible, I kill in response. Okay. I'm okay with this. Right. Do they have to block? If they block with the fairy here, they still die. So they do have to block with the resolute rider. So it just dies. Because they know about baked into a pie. Alright, so now I just kill it. They lose their fairy. We get to play another creature. We get to draw a card. Which is another good card. Alright. And Barrow Witches... Do I want Lost Legion? Probably. Uh, no. With them being at one, Fallmire Knight seems really good. So they're casting Granted. So they're checking their sideboard for anything that could win. This card is probably one of my favorite cards in this set. Because you get a card from your sideboard. Then you cast Fae of Witches. Then if it dies... Oh, they got Opt. <laughs> yeah, you're just dead. Well, maybe. Okay, okay. We are up in the finals against some ridiculous... 
I almost feel like memory theft is necessary against this opponent because that card that draws four cards is just so good that I don't really think I can compete with it. Um, what do I want to get rid of? I mean, my deck is just full of good stuff. Maybe I get rid of one Barrow Witches because they have so many... Oh, it's just so good, though. <laughs> Bell the Brawl, Lost Legion, all of these. No, I think I do get rid of one because... A lot of the removal like taps our creature instead of killing it so it's p totally possible that we just end up with this being a five mana three four which is not good enough uh actually i, I completely take back everything i just said uh barrel witches is just better than the scarecrow so forget everything i said <laughs> a five mana three four is still probably better than a four mana two four in this matchup and i will keep this hand we currently cannot Hengewalker, but ooh, that's a good card. We're going to lead on Swamp, because if we draw any uh, Black Source... Two cards on top? Oh, oh man, I really want to draw a Black Source here. I mean, if we don't, we can just um, activate the Knight, and it's not so bad. But we'll see. Bring to life. Whoa! Whoa! Dude, what? That's fine. I think we can race pretty well here. Mm, I like playing the banner. It gives us more mana next turn. Plus it lets us turn on our adamant, guys. If they tap out, we can just baked into a pie the witching well. I don't want to like let them sacrifice it, but... Animating fairy. Yeah, like they're just going to play the fairy this turn. Yeah. All right, now we have some decisions, actually. So, I can Baked Into a Pie kill the Witching Well, and that effectively denies them a 4-4 creature and 2-2, but it's, like, very mana inefficient this turn. Alternatively, I can Baked Into a Pie... <sighs> this is kind of hard. Because I can just, like, play and cast the Fallmire Knight this turn, but then if they kill it, I just die. I think I kill this. Let's play land. I think I kill this. And I do it now, that way they can't like interact or sacrifice it. And then do I want to play the Fallmire Knight? I think I kind of do. Because then it can block the Wishful Merfolk. That way I don't like get beaten down too hard. Because the rest of my hand is very powerful. And next turn if I hit a land, I can like play both of these or something. Okay, I will definitely be trading. Because it would have traded on defense anyway, so I'd rather just not take the damage. Opponent's pretty far behind as far as, like, card advantage goes. Actually, no, I think we're on parity, but they haven't impacted the board. Oh, oh, they're just playing it as a flyer. Okay, they're just racing. Reeve Soul is, like, really good right now. So I can't cast any of my Adamant cards, but I can cast Lost Legion. And I can kill... This card can't block. Yeah, so I'm going to kill the Fairy. Play a 3 3, scry some. Uh, I don't want this planes. Uh, maybe I do. If I play the planes, then I can resolute rider. But then they can just like tap it down. I'm very tempted to just bottom both, and I think that is probably correct. Because I'm pretty likely to draw land, and a swamp is just so much better than a planes. And if I don't draw land, I can play every spell in my deck, so. Alright, it's a race. Swamp is pretty nice. Okay, let's attack for three. Let's go ahead and play the... I really kind of want to play Resolute Rider. It's like a lot, because I'm taking three in the air, which is kind of a lot. Yeah, let's play Resolute Rider. If they have the thing that taps it, it's like really bad, but I think I'm kind of losing if this doesn't get through. Like, the race doesn't really favor me. So if they can't tap this, then I pretty much win the game because I'm about to gain 5 life off the lifelink. I think the hedge is worth it. They're also missing double black currently, so they can't baked into a pie it. So it's totally possible they just have a hand full of, like, card draw. Okay, I'll take the damage. Don't kill it. Return it to its owner's hand and draw a card. And make a food token. Alright, so we're going to gain some life. That's really good. So, wow, that, that's actually insane. Four mana, bounce a thing, draw a card, make a food token. That's 
Yeah. <laughs> so then now they have double black, so I need to hit a land. Okay, good. And I think I just have to play Resolute Rider and just hope, because they didn't have a way to tap it last turn. And there's no way I can win this race without the Rider. Uh, I guess I kind of don't want to let him, like, kill my banner. So basically, if this doesn't get hit by the enchantment that taps it, then we should be golden. If they pass with four mana up, then they very clearly have bake into a pie. They didn't instant speed enchant it, so I don't think they have it. Nope, they have it. They just waited. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. They didn't have it, and they're not slamming the enchantment. I think we might we might actually get there. Nice. Beautiful. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, let's go land. Swing with both. I think they forgot that Order of Midnight cannot block, because they definitely should have attacked. So they can double block it with the Tome Raiders, but I can just give it indestructible and then still have indestructible up. Alright, I will give lifelink. And pass they're at six life. I can't actually cast any of these. We're just gonna pass. I think double indestructible is pretty nice. That card's an instant? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's actually hilarious. I had no idea that was an instant. Alright, that's Probably people were yelling at me, because it, it's a creature, right? You're like, it's a creature spell, it's got to be a sorcery. Nope, it's an instant. Okay. Well, again, they did not have the enchantment last turn. They drew two cards. Okay, they have it now? Yeah, that's unfortunate. So maybe I messed up by not playing these guys out, because I would have been able to attack for lethal. That's actually a really interesting thing. Planes was pretty bad. Um, I guess... Let's lead with Clockwork Serpent, because Serpent? I would like to be able to draw a black spell for Hengewalker, or a black mana, if I do draw land. Ooh, Wicked Guardian is very good. One, two, three, four. Wait, what am I doing? One, two, three, four. Let's do it like that. Play Wicked Guardian. We're going to kill the Resolute Rider. There's our Swamp. All right, now we attack for three. So now they crack the food. The food is what's really going to hurt us here. Because they go up to 8. We need to draw something. I think I think it actually was correct to play into Resolute Rider there. Just because it's like so likely they have baked into a pie and not Charmed Sleep. But maybe they just had both. Yeah. Okay. So they probably just take Henge Walker. But they could also take Resolute Rider. If they take Henge Walker... It's hard to say, really. It depends if they think they can win in the next two turns. Okay, so they take that. They probably just played as a 2-2 blocker. Because that can trade with Wicked Guardian and keep them alive. Whoa, what? That seems weird. Huh. Are they going to, like, double block the Wicked Guardian? Play like this. Name black. I'm kind of okay with them double blocking the Wicked Guardian. It just reduces their flying clock so much. Last turn. Yeah, I think that was just incorrect. I think they wanted to just attack in the air. Because they had me under under two... No, it wasn't a two-turn clock. Never mind. Now they play a 3-3. Three, three. I don't know. This seems like it's better for my top decks. Like, if I draw that card that I sided in instead of the Scarecrow, which is Cottage, definitely... Actually, is that too slow? So, they hit me down to three. No, it's not too slow. All right. I have to chump block, though. Oh, that's five. All right, we're dead. Okay, on to game three. Pretty pretty interesting uh, finals so far. Both of our decks look insane. Flash of Thorns, Mantle of Tides, Shining Armor. None of that seems good. Let's run it. All right, game three in the finals. We're on the play. Oh, no. I have to mulligan this. There's no way that's good. This hand's pretty good. Oh, I forgot about Memory Theft. Uh... This is kind of interesting. I can just like hit him with a bunch of 3 threes and then not memory theft. And maybe that's just better. Actually, I think that's better. We're just going to play so many creatures like on curve that I'd rather just have a, like a bunch of proactive plays instead of like some proactive plays and then one card that's like, eh, you know. Mm. That merfolk is continuously problematic. 
Um, given that they have a 3 2, I'm going to play Lost Legion. Smooth out my draws a bit. Ooh, Heroic Banner seems good. And Wicked Guardian. So next turn, I think I want both. The Banner is like a land that also pumps my dudes. Animating Fairy, just as a 2 2. Okay. Um, I think I attack. Trading seems okay, but I can also just go banner this turn. But I think trading's probably fine. Let me play a 3 3. Next turn, we're drawing the Witch. And I kind of am just going to play another Hendwalker, probably. Just Relentless 3 3s is like really, really good. Oh gosh, not the card that takes things from my hand. Not the card that takes things from my hand. Oh, this looks like turn into a pumpkin, maybe. We're just going to attack. They're going to bounce it. That's such a good card. All right, play another. Yeah, that card is insane. Like, it <laughs> it does everything that, like, a blue control deck like our opponent's deck would want to do. Wow. Okay. That seems good. Take six. I kind of want to hit a land here, like, pretty badly. Animating Fairy is really, really, really good. <laughs> for three mana, you can turn a food token into a 4-4. Four four. Like, what on earth? If I draw nothing, like a non-land spell I can't play, I'm probably just going to play another Hengewalker. Two cards on top. All right, we might not be winning this one. Oh, Lost Legion seems pretty good. I could play that double block the food. I get some scries in. They sent me a message. <laughs> I think I might double top. Fall My Knight is perfect and I also want a planes. Top top. <laughs> um, I get super blown out by baked into a pie. So like if they just go swamp attack, I think it's worth the risk. I kind of need to risk that, right? Pretty much as soon as I get to resolve baked into a pie on the food, um, we can kind of stabilize. Forest. What? What is a green doing here? Granted. Okay, so they get opt maybe? Swamp. Oh, I see. So they do have baked into a pie. This is a 1-4 flyer. That's so good. Alright, I think I just kill this and start smashing. I'm at 10 life, like I have to do something. And I think racing is probably my best bet. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't even know what this is, but I feel like I'm dead. Uh, I think I cannot, there's no way I can beat this card. <laughs> I don't, there's no way I can beat that card. What? Oh my gosh. Okay. They make two wolves every turn. And when the wolf dies, Garrick has more. That, that card's unbeatable and limited. Oh my gosh. Uh, how do I win? I think it. I don't know how. I, I don't think it's. I don't think there's a line of play that can make me win this game. But we're going to play it out anyway. Because I think it involves flooding the board faster than they can do stuff. I guess. I I really don't think it's possible. Two wolves every turn. <laughs> That's just disgusting. They make a 1-4 flyer. No! <laughs> There's no way! <laughs> well, it was a good run, everybody. This is, uh... <laughs> I can't. There's no way this is beatable. Unless we time them out or, like, deck them. Did they, they must have just sighted in Garrick or something. Take two. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, like, I don't... I mean, I think I go Banner into Hengewalker here. But they're at 15 life. Like, there's no... There's no coming back from this. I, I honestly don't know if it's better... 
I don't think I can attack because the moment one of their guys dies, then they just emblem Garrick and kill me. <laughs> so <laughs> the <laughs> Garrick gets my vote as the most unbeatable limited planeswalker I've played against. Yep. Everybody's asleep. Am I dead? One, two, super dead. I'm asking, yeah, if Garrick was in the deck the whole time, because... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Garrick is just good. We're not going to block. We're just going to take all the damage and die. Well, we gave it our good fight. And uh, very, very close to a trophy. Um, can't beat Garrick, so... See you guys next time. Hopefully we get a trophy then. We get two things. They changed the magic online layout too. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. See you guys soon.